guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be exploring a very common STD and that is gonorrhea. So let's get started. So what is gonorrhea? Gonorrhea is a common sexually transmitted disease which mostly affects younger individuals aged between 15 and 24 years. It is caused by the bacteria called Neisseria gonorrhea and may affect and infect both men and women. In women, the infection may commonly be localized in the cervix, the rectum or the throat, and in men, the infection may commonly be localized in the urethra, which means the inside of the penis, the rectum or the throat as well. So from this definition, we get that gonorrhea, a very commonly known STD, and it's actually most common in teenagers as well as individuals in their early 20s. The infection is actually caused by the bacteria called Neisseria gonorrhea, and both men and women can be affected by the infection. So now that we know what gonorrhea is, let's take a closer look at how the infection is spread. So how is the gonorrheal infection spread? Gonorrhea may be spread during sexual acts without a condom or dental dam, including vaginal, anal or oral sex with a partner who currently has the gonorrheal infection, even if they don't have any symptoms. It can also be spread during the sharing of sex toys that may carry the bacteria and aren't washed or covered with a new condom each time they're used. It can be spread when infected genitals come into direct contact with another set of genitals, and this means that one may contract gonorrhea from a partner even if there is no penetration, orgasm, or ejaculation. The disease can also be spread when one comes into contact with the infected semen or vaginal fluid or gets them into their eyes. And in cases of pregnant moms who are gonorrhea positive, they may pass the infection on to their unborn baby. So these are all the different ways in which the gonorrheal infection can be spread. So what are the signs and symptoms of gonorrhea? So signs and symptoms usually begin within 2 to 14 days after exposure. However, many patients infected with gonorrhea never develop any noticeable symptoms. Because most of these patients are asymptomatic, they won't realize they have the disease. And a key point to note here, however, is that even if patients have no active symptoms of the disease, they can still pass the disease on to others. So many of the patients don't actually notice or experience any active symptoms of the disease, but that doesn't mean that they aren't contagious. So even if they do have a sexual contact during this time, they will be able to pass the disease on to another person. So some of the symptoms that may present in women include an increase in vaginal discharge, which is caused by the inflamed wound, which is called a cervix, pain or burning during urination, pain during sex and or bleeding after sex, pain in the lower abdomen, especially during intercourse, and bleeding between periods and or heavier periods. Some of the symptoms that may affect men include a watery, creamy or slightly green discharge from the penis, pain or burning during urination, pain and or swelling in the testicles, swelling or redness at the opening of the penis, and a fever. The gonorrheal infection at other sides of the body. So something very interesting about this bacteria is that it can actually affect other parts of the body, not just the sexual organs. So the gonorrheal infection may also affect other parts of the body, such as the rectum. Here patients will suffer from anal itching, a pus-like discharge from the rectum, spots of bright red blood on the toilet tissue, and having to strain during bowel movements. The infection can also affect the eyes of the patient, and here the patients will suffer from something called gonococcal conjunctivitis. This causes them eye pain, sensitivity to light, and a pus-like discharge from one or both of the eyes. So in this little image on the top of my screen, we actually see an example of what the adult gonococcal conjunctivitis looks like. You can see the redness. The patient is also in a lot of pain. They have sensitivity to light, and there'll also be some sort of discharge from the eye. The infection can also affect the throat of the patient, so here patients will suffer from a sore throat and swollen lymph glands in the neck region. And finally, the joints. So here patients will suffer from septic arthritis, which means that the affected joints will be warm, red, swollen and extremely painful, especially during movement. And this is actually an image of what the adult gonococcal arthritis looks like. We see the normal limb on the right hand side and now we see this knee joint which is affected by gonococcal arthritis. We see the redness, we see the inflammation, and it's actually very excruciatingly painful for the patient. And it's also warm and it's very difficult for them to move. 
So now let's talk about the testing and diagnosis of gonorrhea. So the first thing we can do is a urine test. So here a sample of the patient's urine is sent for laboratory analysis, which may indicate the presence of infection. So a sample of urine is collected from the patient and is actually sent for lab analysis. And here we can actually test for the presence of the Neisseria gonorrhea bacteria in the urine. We can also do a swabbing test. And here in female patients, a swab is taken from the lower part of the womb, which is called the cervix or the vagina. And in male patients, a swab is taken from the tip of the penis, which is called the urethra. And if one has had anal or oral sex, the swabs are taken from the rectum or throat respectively. So this is actually what the swabbing test looks like. It's sort of a cotton bud, which is in a sterile tube. So this is actually rubbed against the infected area and then is sent off to a lab where it can be tested for the presence of the Neisseria gonorrhea bacteria. And in cases of suspected joint or blood infection, here samples of blood must be drawn and tested for the presence of bacteria, as well as fluid which is aspirated from the joint space. So this is another way in which we can test for the presence of the Neisseria gonorrhea bacteria. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of gonorrhea. So thankfully, antibiotics will cure this infection. The patient is generally administered an antibiotic injection of ceftriaxone, which is 250 milligrams, one time to the buttocks, or a single dose of oral azithromycin daily for up to seven days. And that brings us to the end of this video on gonorrhea. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.